And when Big Moochie Grape stopped the Fed's raid, it was because Govan had just dropped the location of Black Youngster. Because now that Govan is free, he got the bond, they got the money, he told everything that he needed to do. He fully cooperated to the extent, to the fact that they gave him an earliest release possible. Not even Straight Drop got that. Because Govan had been able to work something out. They looked at the motives behind everything related to Govan and his artists and realized that that was the direct connection that they needed to pull this off because now the Rico is activated. And since they trying to get justice for Young Dolph, a lot of people out there is supporting getting Young Dolph. If you're a Young Dolph fan, make sure you put the Dolph emoji in the comment section because now that Govan has spoke, and everybody's reacting to it. Black Youngster is making sure that nobody knows his next move. And Moneybag Yo is out of the picture at this point because they know that Govan had access to the Bentley truck. That's the only way that he was able to catch a ride up there. He stayed in there knowing, knowing to the fact that 901 Trigger Trade was going to pull off to the side of that. That's why they, when they told the two dudes to go to the Family Dollar, they had to wait in there until the Bentley truck drove by because they didn't want them to be seen on the footage having the two dudes walking off there and the Bentley truck because they came out the back of the Bentley truck to walk around Pecan and come around to the back of the cookie shop right before Young Dolph Brother came in. And so that's why they're lucky that Young Dolph Brother didn't recognize Govan before because of the fact that he would have known that Govan was right there. Too bad that they took him right away and actually like found some way to actually get him into the cruiser. They had something pinned on him when they talked to um, they talked to the cookie shop owner. They talked to everybody right there. The first responders and everything. They said that he was the one that was running around with the scrap. And so that's why he went and got locked up. Nobody ever seen him again. And they saying he was staying with Mia J in the whole witness protection program. And so that's why that now knowing that he would have actually recognized Govan because that's young Dolph brother. Of course, he's going to know Govan. He seen, he seen Govan back in L.A. that one time when Dolph had got hit in the arm and everything like that. In the 100 shots, who you think was Black Youngster's driver when they did the 100 shots? Exactly. So that's why he got caught with the CMG driver in the Bentley truck going to Makita's on the way there. Everybody was following. Remember, it was like six or seven cars that was going on. So when the people out there in front standing in that parking lot at the grass was filming around, you remember nobody came close to that window. They all stayed back by that curb because they knew that all these cars was looking around and looking for them. Everything was being seen from across the street. And as soon as the Bentley took off, that's when everything, everybody cleared out. All the people came outside. Everybody started looking at the people. Everybody was looking at the Kyosha Jones and everything like that. And once they started paying attention to that in the arm at the window, man, the Bentley took off and already was down airways, almost turning in to catch that flight. And so by that time, it was already too late. And so once they skirted off, Big Moochie Grape, Key Glock and them, remember, they never even, Snoop Bands, they never even showed up to the cookie shop until Key Glock's brother actually was over there and he walked backwards up to the people to the gate and, and they told him that he couldn't come any further and he was losing it out there because that's Key Glock brother. He knows that the only way he was going to make it out of Memphis was through Young Dolph, basically. And so now Key Glock and them, they don't want to speak. They've been shy to shine away from the interviews. Key Glock did his tribute song. He did he did the tribute at Makita's and everything like that, even though a lot of the fans and the Dolph supporters were unsure if the cookie shop was even allies with Young Dolph. And so that's why they're like, wait, how did Key Glock get the access to go into the cookie shop to do the music video there because they had to turn the lights on and get entrance into the back of it. Did they ever close the back of the cookie shop up or was the door always open like it always is because they might not even have a lock on there. So that means anybody could have been running in there and taking the rope that was tied around the office chair that somebody was sitting in that could have been with the yellow t-shirt and everything like that. And so what happened is, is that now they got to figure out, okay, 
who came into the back of the cookie shop after everything was boarded up and shut down because once they came in, they had remodeled the whole thing. Remember, they patched up the walls and, and fixed the plumbing and everything. They said that bathroom had a total loss. And so because of that, they actually had to have people come into the back and that whole place got cleaned up. That's why they said that somebody figured out that Maurice ran in with the mop and bucket with the yellow caution of wet floor sign. That way they was mopping up that whole entire lobby area where they say young Dolph was looking down at his phone or whatever like that. If he was looking down on his, how could he be looking down on his phone when he was calling Snoop Bands and Big Moochie Grape? You don't look down to call. You put the phone up to the ear and look up to call. And so that's why the sto the Makita's Raven story changed so many times once people was figuring out that it didn't match up exactly to what all the footage is showing. Man, we sitting back and looking at the footage right now, and we see Young Dolph did not come with no other person. They tried to say that he was with his brother at the gas station. That was not even the same day. That's why Marcus Thornton didn't even park in the same parking spot as Young Dolph. You would have seen his car in the picture with the two dudes running back to the Benz Coupe. You would have seen that in with his car in the parking lot. But the only other cars that was in the parking lot was Young Dolph car. Maurice Lincoln with the hot carburetor motorhead, Young Dolph's minivan that's in the parking lot because he owns the businesses right there. He had the delivery van. Remember when they came back and, and flooded the gates with the whole updates about how Young Dolph's van was right there? That's because they was about to do the music video. He was putting all the props there. He only came to drop off the Corvette because he needed to park it there and go get the Lambo and the Ferrari. He was going to bring three, four, five, six cars to the cookie shop and he was going to go and drop one off and go get the other and bring it because they he could you can only drop one thing about it is if you know how to drive, you can only drive one car at a time. It don't matter how good your skills are. There's no way you could be in two cars at the same time driving them. And so that's why Young Dolph came to drop off the Corvette. He was about to get into the van to go and take it down or uh, and get the other car and bring the Lambo and the Ferrari that looked just like it. It's got the same exact wrap, the camel wrap with the blue stripes. But they asked him to come. He didn't know that the cookie shop was going to open that early. So they came in and asked him to try the new flavor. They said they was going to make the Dolph cookie named after him. And he was like, oh, he went in to try it. He was just being nice because if he really wanted to release his own cookie, he would have did it himself. He wouldn't have let them use his name like that. And so when he went in to try it, that's when everything went down. They said he went in there. They asked him to try just like how last time you seen the footage of Makita's Raven running outside while Dolph was right there next to that white truck and she was asking him to try the cookies and then they looked at the sign. So that's really what was going on is that when he went, they kept saying that he went there to get the cookies. He went there to do this, do that. They asked him to get the cookies because one thing about it is that anybody with a cookie shop business or any business at all, you have to make sales, which means you got to ask people to come and buy the stuff. They was advertising and asking to sell cookies to people. They said, hey, you want any cookies? Hey, you want us to make a Dolph cookie for you? And so that's where he was caught up in the conversation. And it was just enough time to where he was in there enough time to where the people, when they pulled up, they seen that it was him. And if, if and if the Bentley was already right there, everybody was pulling up as soon as they seen his car pull up into that parking spot. And he went inside. He was in the tax place. He was in the cookie shop area. He locked his door. But they had that second backup set of keys. Remember when they reached in his pocket and took the keys while they had the camera on him and the microphone when they was doing that interview, his last interview. And so they knew that they had the backup keys so that they could pop the trunk of that Corvette and get that loot that was in the trunk that was the chrome heart bag with millions of dollars in cashier's checks because it was the end of the year. And Dolph had that CPA where he's running millions through that to where he had that tax place. That's the only reason why he had the permits to the whole Makita shop anyways is because 
if the once he did the tax place and the tax scene was over, he was going to build the high rise anyway. So he was going to do the before and after music video shoot where he's at the cookie shop with all the whips and the people. That's why he's trying to get Big Moochie Grape and them to come over. Because if he really wanted to call security, that that's what his brother was for. That's why his brother got there so quick. The other people, they he was wondering why it took Big Moochie Grape so long to get down to the cookie shop because they was doing he was supposed to be bringing all the other cars the purple lambo that he gave to big moochie grape big moochie grape was supposed to bring that to do the music video shoot and key glock was supposed to bring all of his yellow cars and so that's why they even got all of them cars is they had to collect all of it because they was going to do the pre dealership of exotic cars that's why now you see with the whole entire Dolph pop-up museum that we've been telling y'all they should start, and they finally started it, that they got the entire car show out there because Dolph really did have a collection. Like, you could go out and binge watch all the videos about Dolph's $12 million car collection that he left for his whole family because that was a part of the whole generational wealth package that he was leaving behind along with all the assets and the multiple homes and properties that Dolph owned. Uh, Dolph owned over a hundred different hundreds of houses in, in Memphis. He owned half of Memphis, they were saying. And so that's what's going on. So now as the updates keep coming out, you got to make sure to subscribe to the channel so I can catch y'all later.